Hey, y'all. Welcome to episode six of the Broadway Husbands podcast. I'm Brett. And I'm Steven. And we are the, the Broadway, Broadway Husbands. Husbands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So today we have our second set of guests ever on the podcast, a what I call a Broadway power couple and longtime friends of ours, Jessica Rush and Eric Anderson. Jessica was born to performers in Texas. We'll talk about that. Um, and is currently starring in Tina, the Tina Turner musical on Broadway. She also is the co-host of the podcast Mama's Talking Loud Hello. He- here on the Broadway Podcast <laughs> Network. Most importantly, she starred as Sister Mary Amnesia in the 1994 West Orange Stark High School production <laughs> of Nonsense in which Brett did the props. She is the mother to <laughs> Elliot, who is five, and the wife to... Eric Anderson, there, who Eric. is, hello, who is a native of California. He most he was most recently seen in Pretty Woman, but originated the role of Cal in Waitress and has been in many other Broadway shows. How many other Broadway shows have you been in? Oh, one or two. Yeah, you one or two. Many, yeah. many, many, many. Yeah. And, you, and you start as Shlomo. I, I sure. Yes, sure, let's right. add that to Soul Doctor. Um, but you might recognize him as Mr. O'Malley in the greatest showman movie. Oh, yeah. yeah, I know that's a really brief yeah, intro. Yeah, a really brief intro. We wanted to like right. talk to you guys yeah. more yeah, than that. Yeah, no like, worries. Yeah. We can tell you all the things. <laughs> yes, She'll please tell, you tell us. Things. No, 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 we want to we hear it from you, Eric. <laughs> yeah, right. from you. Yep. A lot of unspokens, but we'll see what we can do. <laughs> Jessica, might, you might be the person I know the longest in New York City. I actually thought that this morning about you. I said, Brett's the person in the city who I've known the longest. We've known each other like almost 30 years probably yeah 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 i mean our first show together was king, king and i king and i <laughs> <laughs> a very offensive production of king and i you could not Sorry, get away my with my father <clears throat> you could not get away with that production today no. oh my god <laughs> no no <laughs> no um but i remember my earliest memory of you and this i'd be curious to see if you have an earlier memory but i I um I, the thing I remember the most is we were hanging out backstage or something, and you were like listening to something on your Walkman or some, like you had headphones. Was on it a something. cassette tape? It was a cassette a tape. A cassette tape because oh, okay. mm-hmm. it was the early nineties. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "What is that?" She's like, "Miss Saigon," and I was like, "Oh, that was a double cassette." What's Miss mm-hmm. Saigon? And you're like. <gasps> You don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> and the next day, you made me a copy on two two cassettes. Yes, amazing. And you were like, "Go home, put don't shut your door. Oh my god, listen to this." <laughs> <laughs> I'm not dramatic at all, y'all. Oh my god. And I did just that, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Oh and my you were gosh. host instantly, right? That would have been because we did King and I and Camelot and Brigadoon together, right? At the op- at the Civic Sp- Opera, Beaumont Civic Opera, and that's three. So. Seven, six, fifth. Uh, that would have been ninety-one, probably, that we met. Mm. Wow. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. And then we did Guys and Dolls. We at, did. <laughs> at your Bama dad drove players. us, and I moved to Orange, Texas, and your dad was my high school drama teacher for my freshman year of high school before yeah. you moved. Yes. Um, but I remember you're the first person I told I liked boys. Yes, mm-hmm. I remember that. I always say. <laughs> When people are like, well, I don't always say it, but I'm not walking around. With it. But if it's someone who's like a good friend and yeah. they're like, oh, Brett Schuford, I said yes. And I was like, I was the first person he came out to. Yeah, see, like, I know who he is. I know, I know Brett. And then they're like, what? How do you know each other for so long? I was like, well, Orange, Texas. Is, That's right. Yeah. You know. Orange, Texas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have you been to Orange, Texas? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We drove uh, through Orange, Texas when we caravaned uh, to move here. Yeah. 12 we years stayed, ago. We stayed with my mom all. And my Mimi. And what was souls. your reaction when you got there? <laughs> I, I I loved the quaintness of it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Wow, the simple quaintness. It I was, love it was, that. It was simple and and uh, rooted. It was, it was yeah. very rooted in Americana there. One hundred percent. That's some. That's a nice. No, way to it was put lovely. It. I loved meeting Momo and Mimi. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the people yeah. are good. Yeah, I was just kind of blown away about. Like really, like it was just so flat. Like I'm not used to how flat Texas is. And we drove down the highway for two hours, and then all of a sudden Brett was like, "We're here," and like, "Where are we? Yeah. We're just yeah. on the side yeah. of the highway." Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure nobody had yeah. Wi-Fi when we drove. Through. They didn't. Mm-hmm. No, if we wanted Wi-Fi, we had to go to the truck stop uh, on mm. I-10. Oh my god! There was no Wi-Fi. Was it a Bucky's? This 
<laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the best kind of yeah, it was probably truck flying stop. Jays. It was flying J. Flying J's, yeah, 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 yeah. So <laughs> good times. <laughs> oh, Texas. I just spent a week there. Sorry, I'm like refreshed on my Texas. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So um, we'll talk a little bit more about um, where you guys are on your journey in a minute, but we are going to start with our segment we call Spotlight on Love. <laughs> <laughs> so today's question, and it's it's a little vague, so we'll, I think we can interpret this um, however we wish, but the question came from Sam Ballet on our Instagram. And hey Sam. Hey Sam. And she said, "How do you be more how do you be supportive in hard work transitions without playing into unrealistic expectations?" Oh. So yeah, I, you guys Do you need to do you need them to repeat that? No, I need you to interpret that. So to me, I think <laughs> I like having a <laughs> we have a lot of transitions for work in our industry. We're mm -hmm. constantly going through these transitions, shows closed, shows open, and especially in a relationship how do you guys um, do that without and and stay grounded in your expectations of each other or without mm. expecting things that are beyond real? Well, I mean, I think what I actually just thought of right away when you said that, when you asked that question, and this might not, I think it pertains to this a little bit, but I specifically remember um, after Jersey Boys closed in 07, no, not 07, 17, <laughs> sorry. sorry, mom brain, sorry. 2017. After Jersey Boys closed, um, I didn't have anything lined up and I was a little nervous and I was auditioning for all kinds of things and Eric was at Waitress at the time and my husband has been very lucky that he goes from show to show and he always has something on the burner, what's next? And he also is a principal player and I'm just getting to that point in my career. So at the time of Jersey Boys, I was still an ensemble player and um, I remember I was going to an audition for a play in Arizona somewhere. And he was like, are you really gonna go to Arizona? And I remember, this is, doesn't happen often, but I remember being like, you don't understand. <laughs> What it's like, you know, I mean, first off, we're, I'm a woman and he's a man and that's a whole different thing anyway. But I was just like, you don't understand. You always have something and people ask you to do readings and they ask you, you know what I mean? And I remember being like, this is what it's like. I don't have that mm. luxury. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to go to an audition for a play in Arizona, you know. Um, so I don't know if we always manage it. With that. <laughs> we, we, we just would have missed you. That's all. Uh -huh. you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think we do a really good job, I think, of passing the baton. I mean, there actually have not been many moments in our time together where we've had to, I mean, we tend to work a lot at the same time, mm -hmm. which is lovely and a mm -hmm. blessing. Um, but I remember like, I went back to Jersey Boys the weekend that last ship closed. And so, and Elliot was five months old. So then Eric took over the parenting until he left to go do waitress at ART for, you know, sort of for a few months. And then like right now, Pretty Woman closed, and um, a week later, I started rehearsals for Tina. So we passed the baton, mm -hmm. and he's in full dad mode right now. Loving every minute. Yeah. yeah, that's so fun. And do you guys have like at night? Do you have like you know like an hour or, or twenty? You probably don't have an hour. Like twenty minutes where you just sit and like report to each other. Like how does that work? I mean, I I know we don't even have a kid, and I I feel like it takes us so much energy to figure out what we're doing. So how do you all do that? <laughs> Well, like, it's nice to be able to wake up to each other and, yeah. and, and see each other at night as well. You know, she'll come home from the show and, and maybe have a good hour in her before she has to crash. Yeah. And that's sometimes pushing it. But right. you know. <laughs> I mean, truthfully, in all honesty, I could go right to bed yeah. because I yeah. also know that the alarm's going to go off at 645 to get Elliot up for school and I'm tired, but I want to hang out with him. So because that's the only time we have, mm -hmm. you know, so. Mm -hmm. Like you said, an hour is about. Yeah. <laughs> well, like we can watch like one episode of Queer Eye or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Something light. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> light. I'm always like, I don't want to get invested. I don't yeah. want to have to think about anything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we check in and then and have our moment. But he's yeah, a night nice. owl. It's, yeah. But it's nice to be li living in the same uh, zip code right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And those transitions are tough. Like you know, we just went through that huge transition of moving to <clears throat> Charleston and taking this big risk, and then moving back and. Welcome and back. Thank you. Yeah, welcome back. So happy Yay. to be back. Yeah. Um, but it was such a, you know, for us, like learning how to like express what we need 
when you're in a moment of like, not crisis, but you're in a moment of like, okay, how do we, um, how do we, how do I give you what you need? How do you, mm. how do we provide for each other? How do we set up ourselves financially? How do we set up ourselves schedule wise? Yeah. I mean, and you add a human being to that. I'm sure you guys, it's a whole nother <laughs> a set lot of, of communication pressures. skills, mm-hmm. right? Well, um, I mean, it's just sort of like your perspective and your priorities shift. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, cause I was ready to go do that show in Arizona cause I needed weeks for my health insurance yep. and I needed to make money to help support our family. Do you know what I mean? Yep, so yep. it's like we, that definitely is a very real once you have it's you know when it's just the two of us we could have lived on peanut butter and jelly you know whatever i mean you didn't feel the same pressure when there were just us yeah but now with elliot everything has more you know yeah yeah stakes the stakes are higher Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. yeah and you need more money siren i think my rights here i know i know the siren so, Sam, that is your advice. Communication. Yeah, yes. communication. Communication. Like- and just do your best. I mean, it's going to be hard because there are definitely moments. I mean, talk about as actors. We yeah, we're anxiety. gamblers. We're We've gamblers got, by yes. nature. Know. You know, and sometimes you're sad and yeah. sometimes you're happy. And, you know, I think sometimes just you're giddy. <laughs> sometimes you're punchy <laughs> yeah, and dark true. and sleepy. Oh, my God. <laughs> And sometimes but I think but just, never dopey. Uh, no, but I think just try to, you know, try to support one another and recognize those moments. And we definitely have, there's an ebb and flow of when I need him to, you okay over there? Yeah, I didn't know if that was my stomach gurgling or just my chair. No. <laughs> I think it's the core. I think it's, it's the, the core. core. It's, yeah, it's the I know core. sometimes it's, oh yeah, yeah. Um, but you definitely, you know, have to be that for each other and yeah, recognize yeah. when you're one right. person needs to carry is everything. you. everything. You know, you have to carry each other sometimes. And, yeah. and sometimes you don't know where the other one is. So, mm-hmm. so yes, communication is everything. Mm-hmm. Don't just assume that somebody knows how you're feeling. Mm-hmm. No. That goes for everything in yeah. life. Amen. It's right? very true. I think that's one of the things I think we learned over this year is that sometimes your expectations are not matching other people's expectations. And if you don't say it out loud, yeah. it's no, no be one's going to read your freaking mind. You don't no. read my mind? No. <laughs> I mean, you don't I know think what that I'm you thinking? do. I, I think you're going to say that. that. <laughs> I, think, I think that you read my No, actually, Brett often thinks that he's reading my mind and he's like, I know what you're thinking. I'm like, that's not true. I'm. That's not what I'm thinking. Like, right. stop. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. anyways. That makes me that makes me mad. I'll be like, you don't know. You don't know. Yeah, <laughs> you're not in my head. Yeah, you don't know. I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you want relationship and dating advice from our completely unqualified selves, DM us on Instagram at Broadway Husbands or email us on BroadwayHusbands.com, and we just might choose your question on the next episode. Also, to guarantee you receive our advice, consider becoming pa- a patron on Patreon, and you can join us live to ask your question. Check out this plus an array of other benefits at patreon.com slash broadwayhusbands for more details. All right. Yeah. Okay. So let's just talk for a minute about becoming parents in show mm. business. I know you have a whole podcast about it. We do. Um, I do. Yes, she Jessica do. does. I do. She do. <laughs> With Kara Cooper. Thank but you, you know, for pack, us, like, this is a, a long-term goal for us is to become parents and we've been vlogging and talking about it for a while, but it's a pretty long process and expensive process for for us and what you know but we're anticipating maybe in the next year Yay. we we will have a baby and what what is the most surprising thing for you guys about becoming parents and managing your careers it um i would say that the most surprising thing has been how how much how much less so much of it matters Mm. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, truthfully, it's, I mean, yes, I still have goals and I still have things I want to accomplish and I love my job, but at the end of the day, you know, if Elliot's not there, you know. Yeah, your priorities definitely shift, become selfless. And and it's weird to be a selfless artist because... Because we're usually so selfish. (laughs) And we have to be to an extent, especially Mm -hmm. when it comes to, you know, the art that we're creating. But um, when it comes to what the art is supporting it's very clear that uh, it's it's all about the well-being of our kid yeah yeah i mean it's it's been an interesting journey i think because for me having been not necessarily where i had hoped to be when i became a mother i remember well let me back up a little bit because i remember when i was at jersey boys (laughs) i said something's got to give i'd been there for three years and i was like 
I either need to book a principal contract or I have to have a baby. Like I just felt like I was, cause at the time I was 30, mm, 32, 32. And I was like, <laughs> And I felt like I was that it like I was old. Do you know what, mm-hmm. um, yeah, and I, I wasn't. I feel like that every day, even when I was like twenty. <laughs> right. <laughs> ever, no, no. ever since I was twenty. Like, so oh yes, I get it. <laughs> I have to get a move on. But I remember feeling like something's gotta give. I've been doing the show for three years and I there has to be a shift. Like I mean, my soul needed something else. I could feel it. And we talked about wanting to try to have a baby and you know, but we also were of the mindset that if we couldn't, then that was okay. Mm-hmm. Like we wanted to try but we know so many people who have awesomely full lives who are not parents and and i like to travel and we like having extra money and when you have a baby <laughs> there is no way there are sacrifices <laughs> yeah did so, you, you hear know, that brad i know <laughs> just, <laughs> just, uh, just yeah. letting you know it's okay um, though nobody needs money no. <laughs> really. we're so creative <laughs> um but i remember you know i was sitting in the dressing room and my friend katie always says she goes remember how you said if I could just like leave this book, a couple regional gigs and get pregnant while I was doing one of them. And that way I'll have health insurance weeks and blah, blah, blah. And do you know what happened? That's what, That's what happened. Mm-hmm. Like I said that in the summer and then I booked Elf at Tuts and Gypsy at Chicago Shakes and I left the show and I actually got pregnant when I was doing Elf at Tuts. I did and, too. <laughs> <stop>. <laughs> and, um, and then I went and did Gypsy at Chicago in Chicago oh. And I did that until I was 16 weeks pregnant and nobody knew I was pregnant there. Um, and then she when really I really held that kid in, I did, did man. That I know. Playing, oh my gosh. playing oh. a stripper yeah. and being pregnant. Yeah. yeah I was time. convinced he came to see the show when we had two weeks left and I was like, everyone can tell. I just know they can tell. And he was like, girl, no, nobody can no. tell. He's like, you didn't say girl. You said, Honey, <laughs> nobody can tell. Girl, <laughs> girl. <laughs> um, but no, and so then, you know, I closed that and was pregnant and had Elliot. And then it just so happened that my spot opened back up at Jersey Boys. And that was, I hadn't planned to go back. I wasn't on a maternity leave. I had said, this is the end. I'm going to go and do other things. But you know what? Now I had a baby. My husband's show was about to close. And I said, well, Yes, please. <laughs> yes, yes, I will go back to work at Jersey Boys. And um, that was the first time, I think, where you really recognize, you know, I, when she was a week old, my agents called and said, are you ready to audition? And I was like, <laughs> uh, maybe, yeah. And they're like, Sideshow is looking for the standby. And that is a show I love. Yeah. And I was like, are you kidding? Oh my, um, okay, yeah, I, could, I can do it. I can totally do it. I can do it. My, meanwhile, I'm After like- After a week. Oh, I'm nursing, yeah. like I'm covered in all kinds of fluids, you know, like I'm still wearing the diaper they send you home in, but you know what I mean? Like it's, I was like, what? And they said, well, rehearsals would start in, you know, on this date. And I was like, well, she'd only be a month old. And I remember thinking like, I'll never have this time back. Mm-hmm. Like, I can't do that. And that was the first moment when I truly consciously thought, this is how this kid changes my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is how it affects everything. Yeah, now. and you can't just do everything. No, and you have to really weigh the the opportunities mm-hmm. and and invest where it looks best for the family. Yeah, mm-hmm. it also sounds like um, just in hearing a little bit today, and also because I know you guys, is that it kind of all works out the way it should and like Mm -hmm. you're able to pass it back and forth. And I think that's like so beautiful and you know, just something to notice. Yeah. You can't miss your destiny. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you guys are where you should be at the right time. Totally. As long as you're leading with love. You have to trust. trust My husband says that a lot. Trust. 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 Yeah. Yeah. You know, why stress about things that haven't happened yet? Because I love to feel that anxiety (laughs) and that not in my stomach. You don't love (laughs) it. I don't love it. So let's talk about how, you guys met. We never really talked about this. Oh. We gotta, yeah. Just people will want to know this story, yeah. Beth. Tell. Oh. <laughs> well, <clears throat> back in LA, we were living in LA. Um, this was in 2006. Mm. Yeah, January of 2006. Turn of the century. That's when we met yeah. too, guys. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Um, January 2006. I was doing a show called Pilgrim. We were both in it, but it was the first day of rehearsal and it was the equity meeting. This is why he says I tell this story best. Is this a musical Pilgrim? It was. It was a musical, but it's not Pilgrim like Thanksgiving. Pilgrim Mm -hmm. like on a quest. Which would be great. On a journey. (laughs) It was very like Waterworld meets Les Mis meets Cirque du Soleil. It was epic. Epic. Um, (laughs) It was a lot. So... (laughs) 
post-apocalyptic. It and, was. Um, <laughs> so we're waiting for the equity meeting to start. And someone's like, has anyone seen Eric Anderson? Now, at this point, I don't know him. But um, I do know this girl, Betts, who's our friend. And Betts is, has known Eric a very long time. And her husband is one of his best friends. And she's like, she goes, this is why I didn't want to ride with him, because he's late. <laughs> now, let me tell you, my husband is actually very rarely late. He's usually right on time. Like, mm -hmm. and when I say round time, it's like, if it's starting at 10, he's walking in the door at 10, which but is sort of late. But even if I walk in at 10.05, I'm still on time. No, you're not. <laughs> but in walks this person. The wind blows, no, all the candles no. in the room out. <laughs> no. There's a guitar But he riff. walked in and he had on like <laughs> sailor jeans and this denim shirt open to like with all this chest hair and he's got his sunglasses on inside. Well, it was still bright. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was LA. No, I can't believe you it don't have LA. them on sitting right here and all these lights. Oh, I and didn't then, realize they were filming. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's carrying an apple in one hand and Starbucks in another. So he clearly had stopped the Starbucks and this is why he was late, you know, so... I might have judged that a little bit. But at the same time, I was like, who is this person? He's so interesting. And then that day at the table read, we kept laughing at the same things and making eye contact across the table. And long story short, we had lunch together all the time. And we were just friends because we were both coming out of relationships. And then cut to, that was in January. And then cut to May. And we were hanging out. <laughs> we were single and we were hanging out. Mm -hmm. And then we went to do the last five years in Sacramento. We were oh. randomly, mm -hmm. a mutual friend had recommended us to do this show. And that's when we started dating. I mean, the thing is, is I tell people, I don't remember a time. I don't know when it changed. Mm -hmm. It was such a seamless, easy transition from being friends to being together. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, and no, that was- We established a partnership. Yeah, really Quickly. early. And it's been, you know, in June, it'll be 14 years that we've been together. Yay. And we just had our eighth wedding anniversary. Did we that did. surprise you? The 14 years? No. I saw you. That's amazing. No. He has a keep track. <laughs> <laughs> What's today? <laughs> yeah. I remember, you know, keeping track of you kind of at that time. And then <clears throat> when did you guys decide together that you were like, we're out of L.A.? Like, we're done with L.A. and we're moving to New York. I was on tour with Camelot and... Uh, so Jessica decided that she'd move to New York and give it a try because she never did before. And uh, so... Well, I didn't move. I just came here for like six weeks. She came here for six weeks and basically uh, booked um, Gypsy at City Center with Patti LuPone. So I came out to see the Gypsy run of Gypsy <laughs> and uh, was very overwhelmed at how it was the same community as Los Angeles, but just there was vastly more to it. And I met with my agents who were bi-coastal here to check in and ended up walking out and telling Jessica that I basically told them that we were going to be moving here. <laughs> we hadn't <laughs> talked about it, but he was like, I, yeah, I got to I've got to come. Cause yeah. he had never, Eric was a very big fish in the LA pond. I mean, he was but, very, what? Well, plus, I just, I never really thought to well, come to New Well, that's what I'm York. saying. Like, because you were doing so well in L.A., as a theater actor particularly, that, like, he Which, hadn't really given you know, given but, it... I mean, reflectively, I was scraping by. Well, You, you true, can't make a no living way. really doing uh, theater in L.A. unless you're really lucky. Because they're short runs. They're, you know, all the CLOs have really short runs. So you really have to be able to hop from gig to gig. Right. And they're not production contracts. No. No. <laughs> no, no, no. So I was, I was doing the prestigious artistic shows, you know, but I was doing it for, for no dinero, cents. for love, <laughs> yeah. for love, yeah. for ninety nine cents, for exactly. Love. And uh, and so once we got word that Gypsy was going to be going to Broadway, I left Camelot early. Uh, well, I said I'm going to move to New York because I had always said I didn't want to move here without a job because it's too hard to live here. That's right. Yeah, it's too hard. <laughs> it's cold. You knew. Yeah, yes. I was like, I'm not moving to New York until I have a job. Um, so once we heard that it was going to transfer, I said, I'm moving to New York. And he's like, well, I'll come with you. It's just like that. And so we he left Camelot and we loaded up a U-Haul and we drove out in January of 2008. And we've been here Never now. Never looked back. No. So almost 12 years. Wait, can I ask you backing up a little bit? Who said I love you first? I'll tell this story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. Okay. So we were doing 
the show in Sacramento and we had gone on a drive through the Muir Woods, right? The Redwoods, mm -hmm. um, the forest. And we stopped at this little restaurant and we were sitting, I remember exactly where we were sitting. We were sitting on the side of the, the restaurant like butted to the road and there was a white fence and a, a porch and we were sitting on it. And he said, my sister keeps asking if I'm falling in love with you. And I said, or if you, I love you, something like that. And I said, well, what do you tell her? And he said, I just told her that anytime one of us wants to say it, we say, I'm crazy about you. Aww. And that, so we never actually said, you know, I love you. It wasn't like that, but it was definitely. We still have never said it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping that one day. <laughs> but that was how the conversation of love, okay. you know, came about. It's like, oh, oh yeah. Because, oh. I mean, it. It, like I said, it was pretty seamless. But that's when I think of our anniversary mm -hmm. of dating is in is June. Yeah. Because I think of that conversation. And we were inseparable. Oh, my God. That was yeah. the best summer. We were, like, eating crepes for at breakfast every day and having a lot of drinks in the evening. and Children. Yes. We were <laughs> children. children. Yeah. 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 No and children. still singing that show. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it was like, yeah, let's live our best life in Sacramento. It was good. I remember seeing you guys when you first moved here. And I remember actually, you were talking about, talking about Elliot. I remember seeing you like the day before you popped. Oh. And you were like, your feet were so small. Oh, I before I had that. her. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. I looked down. I was like, whose feet are these? <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> these are not my feet. Um, okay. So my question. So Eric, are you, is your family in the theater? Uh, my folks were in a band together before I was born. And um, they were called The Sound Arrangement. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, his mom sat, had a band with Karen Carpenter in college. Yeah, my mom what? went to college with uh -huh. Karen so and Richard. Cool. They were in a band called The That's Spectrum cool. together. Mm -hmm. So once Richard and Karen went off to do the brother-sister thing, uh, my mom had a band of her own that my dad, they needed a bass player vocalist, and my dad came out from Philly and joined up in L.A. Once I was born, the band disbanded. <laughs> and um, my father continued to do theater throughout his life until he passed away in 2010. Uh, so, yeah, I, I would always tag along with him to his shows, learn uh, everybody else's parts. Um, eventually started doing shows with him, and that was kind of uh, my in. And yeah. I never did anything else. Yeah, That's so interesting. So, you know, my family was not in the theater really at all. I mean, they drove me to play practice as you recall mm -hmm. but um what's it like having both your you know kind of coming from theatrical families and then also pursuing it professionally well i personally it's all i know so right. i mean it was like you know there was there was no alternatives i didn't focus on anything else other than he legit didn't focus on it. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't in football? <laughs> no. I, and I, and I slept, he didn't even uh, do homework. I, I slept mean, in class. Know. I got to know the teacher so I wouldn't have to do homework. Uh -huh. and, you know, I schmoozed the system. <laughs> yeah. He's super smart. He just didn't ever want to do anything except be that, yeah. you know. That's but I think so that's good. something about how we connected, though, too. I think we have very similar upbringings. I mean, my parents met in the college theater department and then but then became teachers, however, still doing community theater on the side, you know? So we both grew up in a household that was full of music and the arts and, and theater. And cause still to this day, like Eric's mother sings all the time. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. there's always singing and always things. music in the air. Always, Aww. always. I, I but, didn't know that about your parents. That's so cool. Yeah. I love yeah. That. No, it was awesome. That. And so I think that that, I think that's part of why we work so well. Like we have such a common background, right? Sure. Wouldn't you agree? Well, sure. To a certain extent. Yeah, we're both uh, theater urchins. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we are theater urchins. Yeah, and now you know, we're our kid here. Is one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you think? Do you see Elliot pursuing this? Do you think she wants to? I don't know if she'll pursue it per se, but she definitely identifies with the world of it. Mm -hmm. She is, she enjoys performing. Yes. She, she also enjoys directing. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. in her play style. Mm -hmm. Every, every, um, every game we play starts with. A uh, pretend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretend. Yeah. Um, pretend, uh, you are a new kid at school, mom, and I'm coming in, you know, or pretend you're this or pretend you're Elsa or pretend mm -hmm. you're whatever. I mean, it's always pretend, pretend, pretend. My dad thinks it's hysterical because he, he said, he was like, 
you remember how much you hate improv? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, and you improv every day. I was like, yeah. <laughs> and I have improv every day That's for so the really, last like three years she's with really my made child. Step up, like, oh my God. Like, step girl, up and break out of any can we stick sense to a of script? lazy imagination that yeah. we had as yeah. adults. And I mean, it's great. I mean, for a long time, she said she wanted to be a pediatrician. I mean, long time. She's five. So like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> for a couple months. But, but recently, <laughs> but recently I have noticed like this morning, she they have a holiday concert on the 17th. And she's like, uh, Mom, since I have a holiday concert on the 17th, I'm going to draw a pers- me performing on the stage on her calendar. She drew it. She also told me that yesterday she asked her teacher if she could do some of her ballet in the concert. Mm. So, like, there's definitely some, you know, but at the same time, when they needed a Lulu and waitress recently, and they oh. called us about her auditioning, I asked her if she'd want to, because we're not going to force her to do anything, you know? So we were like, what do you think? Would you want to be a little Lulu and waitress? And she goes, um, what if I get tired? And I was like, <laughs> very true. Broadway That's, is a grind. It's mm-hmm. pretty exhausting. Exactly. It's so Olympic. I don't know. I think she's interested and she thinks it's fun, but she's not quite sure. You know, I mean, we're so, we have so far to go. Yeah. Like, she, we keep forgetting. She's, she's only five. Bright. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's so adorable if you guys don't follow either of them on social media you should because elliot's all over it and she's oh. so adorable yeah what are your nice. handle what's your handle mine is just is a rush on insta on insta as well as broadway baby mamas probably baby mamas. and which is a group i started of broadway moms and mama's talking loud which is the podcast i have on the broadway podcast network with kara cooper and where do we where do people find you here i'm at Beyonce. <laughs> you There's not so a lot of pictures on me. Yeah, I know, I know. But I try not to post any pictures of me. Um, other than that one, I'm also at E Groove. E Groove. E Groove. So talk about um, the, why did Broadway Babies Mamas start? What was the impetus for that? Um, Broadway Baby Mamas is a group that. So Kara Cooper and I, Kara, who is my uh, co host on my podcast. We actually were Jersey Boys together. We were the only two moms. She was the first person to become a mom in the company. And then I was after her. And there we were, like pumping in the dressing room at intermission and things like that. Good times. <laughs> and we were both had small children. Elliot was a baby, and her daughter Elin was one. And we had all these you know, issues and juggling schedules and how do you make this work? And when you have an audition and who watches the kid and do you pay $60 on a sitter to go to an audition? You know what I mean? It's like, as well as many other things. And so we thought we surely were not the only people who have these struggles. And, you know, there was a time where women quit the business or they didn't have kids. Like that was basically what the options were. And still to a certain degree, a lot of people assume that you have quit when you have a child. Um, or you take time away to, you know, be pregnant and become a mother. Um, but we, we thought let's form a group because there were other mom groups out there, but some had sort of devolved into places where they just complained about their husbands a lot and things like that. And I was like, that's not what we want. Like, that's not, that's not healthy. So, um, we started, it's a private Facebook group, Broadway baby mamas, but we have grown now to 300 members about, and it's for anyone in the tri-state metro area who is actively pursuing a career in theater be they an actor a musician a stage manager a you know lyricist a composer you know we've got all kinds we've got tony winners directors producers we've got casting directors we've got um you know we have tony award winners all the way down to people who are still grinding out you know trying the summer stock trying Mm -hmm. to get that first broadway credit you know what i mean like it's all of us, we're all in this together. Cause I think that living in New York city and the surrounding areas and juggling motherhood and a career <laughs> in the theater is tricky. Mm-hmm. It's very tricky. It's unique. It's, it's very super unique. unique. And that's why other mom groups didn't really fit. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, they don't, they can't possibly understand what it's like to not be able to utilize daycare because we work at night. So mm-hmm. I have to constantly, you know what I mean? It's, mm-hmm. it's that kind of stuff. And, uh, and we, and it's so great. Like women come on asking about things from, you know, I need a doula or does anyone know what sort of cream would really work for 
chafed nipples. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or all the way to like, I got an offer. I know I shouldn't have even talked about it. <laughs> I know. Sorry. Is my new band. Sorry. <laughs> I need to know about that. Sorry, you guys. I forget sometimes. It's real. Happens. No, you no it's, it's a real, real thing. It's a real thing. Yeah. And, uh, and then like, I got an offer for a national tour. Can I really make this happen with my child? Mm. Who's done it? You know, and in it, or just I'm having a really hard day. Like yeah. I got a sitter for my kid and I slept to this audition in the rain and then I got there and then I did not nail it. And I feel, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. all the things and yeah. the support that happens, women just like come out of the woodwork. Mm. You know what I mean? Like 80 comments of just like, you got this girl or I've been there or I know, or if someone's kid is sick or they, whatever, it's yeah. amazing. The support is amazing. And we've, we've done a couple concerts um, and we're trying to do more, but getting moms to commit to a, a date mm -hmm. that's got to be hard <laughs> that is that's hard, hard yeah, yeah. moms are already like, fully scheduled moms yeah. yeah the schedule of a mother is intense and so but we um and then because of broadway baby mama's dory the producer mm -hmm. of broadway podcast network dory berenstein knew that kara had started this dory is a mother herself and she was like i wish there had been something like this when i was younger you know mm -hmm. and so we um she came to Kara and said, would you guys want to do a podcast? And now that's where Mama's Talking Loud is. Well, that's I know so you're, cool. I know some moms in my show at Wicked wow. who are so grateful for that group. Mm -hmm. And now that the podcast is out, um, you guys should make sure you subscribe, take a listen to wow. Jessica, follow them on all the social. And we thank you for being guests yes. on for the Broadway of Husbands course. podcast. And on this podcast, wow. we encourage you to love who you love and love what you do. Yeah. Boom. Subscribe now. <laughs> <laughs>